Remku in a pool dressed in all white ascending into heaven. La. At least for Flanders, although this race is in Wallonia. This is Liège, Baston Liège, one of the or the last monument of spring. It's the La Doyenne, the hilliest of them all, with the Côte de la Redoute where Remco launched last year in the Côte de la Roche au Faucon. But we have Pidcock here for Ineos, who is good so far at Amstel. And most importantly, Pagacha. He can't go past him. Could he complete the Ardennes triple after cleaning Flesh, Amstel, and Ronde von Leiden before? So the super triple, also called a quadruple. That's a new word for you. But Remco has come down from the mountain, from Tayde, to greet us all with all white bib shorts, thanks for coming. And before coverage started, this is locally recorded, this is Pagacha, this is before he crashed, the only image we have of him coming back to the, probably after a pee break with Groschardner. We heard that unfortunately he crashed out of the race, was taken for x-rays and I think fractured his scaphoid. You are you going to release a press release all about it, I presume, this evening, which is a huge shame for the race and for Pagacha. And how would that affect the other team's tactics? We had a breakout with Osborne Lebert, uh, Zimmerman, Velasco was probably the strongest of them, and Quickstep with Schmidt were pacing. And they had a deep team here, Quickstep. They were pacing and keeping that break in check down to a 210 gap with 100 k's to go. Osborne here wants to go for a P from the breakaway. Always a difficult task. And I think Balks at it because your man here in the dark jeans was kind of – he put him off. And, you know, I feel I feel for him as well. I wonder – I hope Osborne was able to P eventually. If he could let us know, that would be great. Anyway, quick step going hammer and tongs before Tranik anticipates – and this is what we expected with, with Pog in the race and Remco, because you've got to get ahead of, of Remco and Pagacci. You can't go to Redoute or Rocha for Con with them, and Quickstep don't react. And so we have what looks like a nice move. Now, Bahrain and EF and Trek, you'd think they'd want to be here too with some of their second-tier guys. We've got FTJ and Ineos, Matawaz and Sheffield with Tratnik, but it becomes a group of one pretty quickly and the breakaways thin down Velasco and Osborne driving it. And when they get on to, I think Stocko, one of the steepest climbs in the race, actually Tratnik has dropped Matawaz and then he drops Sheffield. And so he's solo. So yeah, quick step have to chase Tratnik and they do a pretty good job of controlling it. I presume their plan was to launch Remco and Redoute anyway, but 73 Ks to go, two domestiques. And we still got like four, an hour until Redoute. So Tratnik's putting them under a little bit of pressure, so they do just let that gap go out. And I guess we're fortunate, or no one could, that EF and the other teams couldn't go with Tratnik and maybe make this a little bit more difficult for Quickstep, with Alaphilippe coming back, maintaining it, giving Vavaka some respite. Tratnik eventually, some kilometers later, gets across to the breakaway, but that's thin down to now just Velasco and Osborne, and Velasco wants to go for KOM points, which I didn't know existed in a one-day race yet. And then it starts raining a little bit, and Vivarka rips into this gap, now down to 40 seconds. Volta in the Hungarian National Champs, Josef Yumbo, goes up to the motorbike and says, go away. And then Vivarka says, tranquilo, tío. Um, that didn't really make much of a difference to anything. Molomer and Sivakov, though, for Ineos, now they try to move, and Israel moved too, but we're too close to Redut. We're 11 Ks, we're less than 20 minutes away from Redut. And now Remco, he's first he's monitoring himself, and then he trusts Van Wilden. Nah, no more moves, no people bridging to Tratnik or whatever, making life difficult. Van Wilder shuts this down. That does mean Vivak is sliding back and nearly dropped at this point from the group, and but it's made the race so bad. So Van Wilder, though, he soft taps. No other Ineos riders counter, but then Vivak comes back to the front pacing, and there's no possibility of countering. So... All quick steps way apart from Tratnik up the road. The other teams, of course, are going to do the lead outs, Aligotti and Freyla, into the base of La Redoute, which has that steep section. It's where Remco went at the end last year, but it's wet this year. And Van Wilder begins the big lead out, putting it in a line. But no, it starts in bad position. That's going to cost him badly. With Trago and Pidcock right on Remco, all in white's wheel. And I thought this was the moment. Except Remco slips when he's out of the saddle. His back wheel slips on the paint. I don't know whose face that is. Um, I'd like him scrubbed off next year, unless it's Remco's face, in which case I don't know why Remco painted it on the ground, but he doesn't attack. It stops him. And I feel like he was going to go there. And then I was like, does he have a mechanical or a problem? Peacock comes up, starts half wheeling him. Camera changes angle. Bardet's there. Healy's there. And Remco goes again. Not as like in the drops 
you know, big watt bomb, maybe at least from appearances sake as last year, but we're also on 11% gradient. So I'm sure he is dumping a lot of watts right now with Chaconi and Pidcock drop. And Pidcock manages to get back on the wet descent. He's got probably the better, well, no, definitely has the better descending than Avonapool, but at what cost? And we have Trek behind with two riders, Schielmoser, who's had a fantastic season so far, and Chicone, frankly. Can they work together and bring them back or at least keep going and ensure a podium spot with a group behind of Helion EF? Yoni Zagira obviously gets a huge rain buff. The note for uh, Yumbo Buitrago for uh, Bahrain and Bardet for DSM in the black, which are an unbelievable race. Um, he's going to be even better. But Peacock starts looking down. And this is the tell, I think, where things, he's not feeling good, evidently, or at least not on Remco's wheel. And Remco kind of drops him with that heavy pace on the false flat uphill without really attacking. And that's the race over. There's nothing really much more to say in terms of the win tactically. Healy gets across to, on Forge, I think, to the two Trek riders. And they're subsumed into a really big group because they don't really work together. And then... Yeah, it's just weird. I thought that group of four would kind of go clear and, and play for the podium because Trek had two, but they, they didn't. And Remco, he gets the gap to 130, takes it really easy on the descents and the wet, which you get the same result if you win by 130 or three minutes. So Pluski, Lawrence de Plus looking really good at Tour of the Alps and here brings back Ineos or leaves them out rather on Rocha Foucault. And these three go clear. Peacock, Healy and Buitrago and no Trek Segafredo. And they'd fight it out for the sprint behind. But Remco, did he save Quick Step's classic season? Let me know down below. But with Pog out, whilst it was a miracle last year, we know to expect this, or at least you all know to expect this, from this man this year, second year of asking, solo basically from La Redoute, ahead of Pidcock winning the sprint behind from Betrago, probably the best of a career result for Betrago. Actually, Healy fourth, Madawas fifth, Guillaume Martin, a nice result, 6-2. Then Teich Benoit, Konrad, Schelmer, Jensen, and Hirschi rounding out the top 10. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, a super tough race, long race, hard conditions. Um, also the, the brutal crash of, uh, of Tade and some others. And I just wish them all my, my best wishes. Uh, I hope he's OK. Um, but I have to thank my team for this uh, for this beautiful victory because they, uh, they pulled off a great show uh, working for me from the start. And uh, yeah. It's uh, it's their victory as well, uh, but I'm just so happy to take uh, two out of two here in Liege. It's uh, an amazing feeling, especially with this beautiful jersey. A huge win for Renko, but at what cost for the Tour de France for Pogaccia? Hopefully he recovers in time and he's able to train okay. We'll wait for further news from him, but otherwise the Giro is before that and Renko is looking in good shape. Until then, ciao.